Hi, good evening. My name is Abraham Leno, and I'm the country director for the American Refugee Committee in the Congo. My colleague is uh, Jocelyn. She's the director for IDU.org. We all know teenagers, and every teenager has a dream. For some teenagers, they dream to be CEOs in Silicon Valley. <laughs> Some want to be the next president, others want to be doctors. When I was 16 years old, I had my own dreams too. But at the age of 16, my dreams were cut short. We fled, my family and I fled a conflict in Sierra Leone, and we were refugees into Guinea. In Guinea, we lived in a refugee camp. And in a refugee camp, you are given a number, not a name. We stood in line to receive food ration. We received free health care. I learned to build my own shelter at the age of 16 with sticks and mud and dubbed it. These helps that we got and services were all very good. But there was a problem. My dreams were still not in them. They didn't respond to my long-term needs. I didn't see how I could be the president in the camp. <laughs> 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 so my family also did not want to be defined by our vulnerability. They had a future. They had plans for their own kids as well. So we decided to move outside of the camp and integrate into communities in Guinea. For the following four years, because of language issues, I could not go to school. So what I did was sell fuel on the street to help to bring food home. My brothers and I worked as porters to bring food home. Mom sold her jewelry to bring food home. Dad worked as a pastor. That's what he knew. We fast forward a couple of years. I went to school, got the opportunity to come back and work in the same camps that I had gone through. I worked for over 10 years with various organizations in places like Sudan, Pakistan, Liberia, Ethiopia, and you name it, doing what I love doing, because it's part of my story. In 2012, I decided I want to quit. It's not because I don't like what I do, but the way it was being done was still giving me a feel of what drove me from those camps. It was still not responding to the needs, the long-term needs of the refugees that we served. So my CEO, uh, who is not here today, told me, since you're a rebel, Abraham, Let's go to Congo and do something different. So we went to do a project. We built a project that we called and branded Asili, which means foundation. We worked with IDEO.org, and they helped us to do the branding process. They do, did the market research. And we decided that we are going to build around some key success factors. One, that anything we build, it will be around success, uh, excellence. If it is not good for a kid in San Francisco, it is not good enough for a kid in Congo. We will not build it. <laughs> Two, that it has to be sustainable. Because traditional humanitarian response is very cyclical. It goes only in short-term circles. We think that refugees come today and tomorrow they are gone, but that's never true. So our program cycles have to change. Many of you here have built businesses. When you build a 7-Eleven store, you don't move it every three months, do you? <laughs> no. What are you doing? You're creating trust. You're creating accountability with your community. And our project has to do the same, not different. And three, we said anything we build has to have value and dignity. For me, that's options. Treating people as clients as opposed to beneficiary is more empowering. And so. IDEO.org helped us to pull out all of these elements because it's different. We, as an NGO, did not know how to bring in market research, branding, and all of those things. This is part of the branding process that IDEO helped us do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm proud, <laughs> proud to wear it. But these are the things that they helped us to do. Recently, a government official went to visit the project, and he saw all what we were doing. And he called me on the side, and he said, Abraham, do you know what you have branded here? Do you know what really Asili means? And I said, 
Yes, sir, I know. I went into all the things that IDEO has taught me. Yeah, we did market research, and this is what it means. It means foundation. He said, no, listen. It means, Asili means our secret, what holds us together. For me, that's dignity. Putting back the people that we're doing this for, we're building it along with them, and we're giving them options. We'll show you a project video, and my colleague will talk about some of our uh, key successes. Imagine a future where millions of people take greater control of their lives today, giving them all the more reason to dream about tomorrow. Imagine a future where a business provides the foundation for health, clean water, and nutrition to the people who need it most. A future where a smart startup enables more people to seize the opportunities around them. This future isn't a dream, it's becoming a reality, all through Asili, a disruptive community-owned enterprise. Women are able to provide for themselves and their families. They are empowered to bring solutions to their community that vastly improve the odds of their children seeing their fifth birthdays. It's not a handout. Asili is a locally run business. People pay for clean water, clinic visits, and access to nutritious foods through their own purchasing power, allowing them to invest in a better tomorrow. <laughs> Asili adopts new technology, making transactions safe and easy. Asili is built, operated, and owned by the community who uses it. From the products to the experience, the community has shaped each nuance of the business. If Asili can work here, in one of the most difficult places on earth, is there any limit to its reach? When I went to the Congo to build Asili with our team, we realized quickly that it was more than just access to clean water, health care, and an agricultural marketplace. It was a platform for enterprise to thrive, and it's breaking the cycle of aid dependency. It's a way to start to create evidence that business can, in fact, succeed in the Congo. Asili's plug-and-play model allows it to quickly expand its offerings. Energy, education, and sanitation services will be integrated into the platform, enabling new jobs and stronger economic development for the communities it serves. Within the next three years, Asili will support 50,000 people in the Congo. Since its launch in September, the health clinic has seen over 1,000 patients and is routinely diagnosing common problems in the community. Just a few months ago, Asili saw the delivery, the delivery of its first baby. Mohongo heard about Asili from a neighboring village, and she decided to move to our community so that she could have her first baby born in our clinic. She worked on an Asili farmer's land so she could collect money to pay the clinic fee and delivered the healthy baby shortly thereafter. After three harvest cycles, local farmers have reported larger yields of potatoes, beans, and peas. Farmers have reported a post-harvest income of $40 prior to joining a Sealy, and now that they've been working with us, they're seeing an income of $240 per harvest, which is a six-fold increase. What's even more exciting is that Asili brand potatoes have been selling in mass to hospitals, hotels, and to local politicians. Yeah. We've learned that water is viewed as a community resource, something to which everyone should have access, which is why Asili doesn't actually sell water to members. It comes part of the membership package. So far, we've distributed over a million liters of water, which has drastically reduced the clinic visits because instances of diarrhea have rapidly declined. And the business model is working. Asili was designed for the community to build on it, and they have. What's giving us so much hope is that a restaurant, a church, a night school, and even electricity poles for when electricity comes to the village have sprung up around the clinic. It's all because the community owns it. Even the African music superstar Papa Wemba visited and wrote a song about Asili. He's connecting us to the diaspora, and excitement is building everywhere. But we're not stopping there. The goal was always to design a system that could scale. We need to ensure that it's on the path to success. This is really our beta. 
As the design partner of ARC, IDEO.org will return to the Congo to refine and operationalize Asili's business model. Through redesigning the membership model, expanding Asili's marketing reach, and bolstering its retail offering for scale, Asili will have even greater potential for financial sustainability and impact in the communities and countries in which it will expand. Thanks to the tools we left with ARC, they've secured funding to expand <coughs> Asili to four centers. This summer, the second clinic will open near Bukavu. We're ramping up to raise funds for additional centers. And as we do, we will ensure that Asili grows responsibly, continues to address the needs of the community, and ultimately improves hundreds of thousands of lives. Thank you. All right, we can take one question. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Could you talk a little bit about the challenge that was, oh, the microphone. Could you talk a little bit about the origin of your collaboration, the challenge that was brought to IDEO.org, and how you used human-centered design to then build on that. Did you build the business model? Yeah. What is it that you did together? What was the okay, yeah. you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> beginning of it? <laughs> so we started working together actually in 2010, um, which was the time of the famine in the Horn of Africa. We started working with American Refugee Committee actually on Somalia and about really rebranding the famine in Somalia and Somalia itself to really draw the diaspora community into supporting this hunger relief in Somalia. So we formed a great partnership um, actually several years ago. And when this opportunity came up and ARC started thinking about how they could creatively um, develop a new social enterprise solution in the Congo, we were the first ones they called. And so where human-centered design played a role was really in helping to think about the overall customer experience um, yeah. for the people in the Congo, to think about designing the business model, as Abraham mentioned, the branding and the communications and the marketing really was sort of a holistic approach. And you know, design plays a role large and small um, from the biggest details in terms of thinking about things like membership models or who should be um, the community leaders that are really promoting the service, but also in really small things. A really quick story is that we spoke with a woman when we were doing design research in the Congo who said that she had been getting prenatal visits, but then she decided to stop because she was never sure how much it was going to cost her the next time she visited the doctor. The prices weren't posted. The prices would change in between visits. And so that insecurity actually caused her to stop getting care as she was planning to have her pregnancy, as she was planning to deliver her baby. And so one of the things that we took, took that into account and really designed was to have transparent pricing available in each one of the clinics so that something like not knowing the cost of the next visit wouldn't ever prevent a woman from seeking um, care again. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.